On the 29th of December 2018, the week that was, this is our last show of 2018 as we roll into 2019 from WBRN Radio and on the Boston Red Network. We have started to consolidate our programs. We would be Boston Red, the political program. Boston Red on the World, a BR on the World international program. We invite you to go there. Uh, we have uh, an edited version of the 2018 news conference by Vladimir uh, Putin, the president of the Russian Federation. We also have the open source report where we talk about open source report. We're talking about the latest uh, version of Linux, the... Uh, Unix-like uh, operating system. It is free uh, software. It's been around over 20 years, invented by uh, Linus uh, Tovels. It now at 2.4 uh, uh, and uh, rolling on. You can check that out. Uh, and there are various distributions also out there. And when you think of the cloud, it is all Linux. In an era that uh, the OS or operating system really doesn't matter that much if you're operating on a mobile device you're using one of two operating systems that are basically from the same uh, kernel from the uh, Unix kernel uh, if iOS or the Apple uh, version you would be uh, using a uh, free basic it's a variant of that or android uh, you also have the linux kernel in android so a little note there about operating uh, systems uh, and where they are in the uh, scheme of things we also have all about sports that's our newest uh, production uh, you'll hopefully get to see another version of it we've only gotten one version up that's unfortunate uh, this week, as we have a little time uh, now between uh, holidays, etc., uh, time to not only reflect but do the work that did not get, uh, not uh, would not uh, been able to uh, complete uh, during the year. So these are some of the things that are setting up here. Let me first go to Kwanzaa. We are celebrating uh, Kwanzaa. It started on the 26th on the Emoja. Uh, that is Unity. And then on Thursday, that would have been the 26th uh, Kukachanalua, uh, self-determination. And on Friday, Yijima, that is collective work and responsibility. And today, the 29th, uh, we have uh, Yijima, that is cooperative economics. And those are the days, uh, This uh, the Kwanzaa celebration was laid out uh, by Dr. Milana Karinga. And from where I was just reading, this was the uh, ceremony uh, held uh, in uh, Long Beach, uh, California. 
excuse me, in, uh, he's from Long Beach, the University of California, Long Beach. This is in a Pasadena. It's an African-American, pan-African holiday celebrated by its millions throughout the world, no doubt about it. And of uh, the uh, theme uh, of this year, let me just uh, have to hop along over here and get it. Uh, the theme is uh, re-imaging and remaking uh, the world. A Kwanzaa commitment to uh, an inclusive uh, good. Now that's uh, basically the same philosophy supposedly of the uh, Google people, do no evil. A lot of that has uh, been uh, rendering their similarities between various uh, causal things in the society. At the very heart and a center of the celebration of Kwanzaa is the ethical imperative and social obligation of the uh, cooperative creation and the sharing of an inclusive good. That is from Dr. Uh, Karinga wrote in his uh, found uh, annual uh, message. That can also be found in the uh, Los Angeles uh, paper. The uh, principles and related uh, practices are rooted in an ancient origins in the African harvest. The uh, uh, communal uh, terrian uh, worldview and the way of life that uh, under uh, gridded and uh, informed it, the uh, Dr. Karinga said, the ancient roots of Kwanda in the uh, shared African harvest and celebration, and immediately brings to mind uh, the sacrifice, uh, sacred, excuse me, teachings uh, given to us by our honored ancestors, the Odur Ifa. Uh, which uh, tells and teaches us that we are uh, to uh, constantly strive and struggle uh, to bring uh, good into the world and uh, share it uh, and not uh, let any good be lost. So this is uh, what uh, Kwanzaa is all about. It's not any different from other communities, whether it be uh, communities as spoken uh, by the uh, veteran journalist Dan Rabba and the com- progressive uh, ecosystem that he is uh, sponsoring. We, of course, uh, dedicate one of our programs to him and his uh, GUTS uh, uh, program. Um, We uh, ask you to uh, check uh, him out. Uh, Oops. Moving around the screen here a little bit. uh, Where we have him, News and GUTS is his uh, program. And, of course, this week, uh, Democracy Dies in Darkness. That's from the uh, Washington Post. And also the uh, Stetson Kennedy Foundation. We invite you to give to it. There, incidentally, is an exhibit in uh, St. Augustine, of Florida. It ends on the 31st at the administration building there about the life and work of uh, Stetson Kennedy and his contribution uh, to the humanity. He was a fearless fly- fighter against uh, racist organizations, particularly in the 40s, the Ku Klux Klan. And you should read his books and go to the foundation. He was a friend of the late uh, Woody Guffrey, the uh, folk singer uh, par excellence, the man that had on his guitar, this guitar fights uh, fascism. So Stetson Kennedy, a... Uh, fighter against uh, fascism uh, and in today it is uh, no doubt uh, front and center with the present regime we'll go now to Uncle Carl who will win the uh, shutdown he calls it he's writing in the Wall Street Journal on the oops, the 27th of December 2018 and Uncle Carl's been around a very very long time uh doing a political consultant uh, type work. Uh, he's uh, consulted to various administrations, the last administration being uh, of G.W. Bush. And also, uh, he is a, a fundraiser, a very good fundraiser, has a PAC uh, that sponsors, quote-unquote, uh, Uh, traditional uh, Republicans and that is a word that's not used much anyway let me start this out all major actors uh, in uh, the government shutdown drama have uh, seen uh, their stands uh, suffer with the uh, public including 
the uh, leader, the minority leader, uh, Mr. Schumer, the speaker designate uh, Nancy Pelosi and her Demo- House Democrats and uh, D.J. Trump and the Congressional Republicans. You notice what he's done here. He, uh, in his uh, Senate structure, uh, left uh, D.J. Trump and the Republicans last and not front and center. What he's basically saying is it is uh, on the Democrats. Trump held a uh, weekend in the controversy. Now, this is actually a factual statement to start. A December 18th for a Quinnipiac poll uh, found 43% of the voters supported a building a wall. We talked about that in the uh, recent Reuters uh, poll with Mexico, while 54% opposed it. That uh, may overstate support for the president's position. Uh, December the 4th, NPR uh, News Hour Marxist College in upstate New York found that uh, 27% of Americans felt building a wall between Mexico and uh, the U.S. should uh, be an immediate uh, priority. Compared with 19% uh, who said it should not be an immediate priority and 50% who felt the issue should not be a priority at all. So it's overwhelmingly stacked in the polling. And traditional uh, political consultants like uh, Karl Rove look at the polling and where it will go in the future. Now this is not where they are today. What has happened in Washington under this particular regime that came in with a weak hand to begin with, that's what Uncle Carl should have said, that it was almost a fluke of history. D.J. Trump was able to win Wisconsin and uh, also win Michigan. He won a a traditional command and control state in uh, Pennsylvania. In Ohio, a a bellwether state, we're not talking here about of Florida, because Florida is a corrupt state. But that was basically enough to get the Electoral College uh, to D.J. Trump. But in the popular vote, uh, D.J. Trump was behind, and is still behind. And this is one of the situations, if you look at the maps of wherever, if you start to look, you go to the West Coast, from Washington State down to Oregon in California, all of the West across to New Mexico, Barely won uh, Arizona. Uh, our model shows he would not win Arizona. He will not win Arizona today. <coughs> excuse me. In uh, 2020. If it were the 2020 election were held uh, today. Well then you have these very small states. Uh, such as uh, Wyoming. Uh, Utah. And Utah it was uh, amazingly close. So things have changed there. Nina Love. Uh who D.J. Trump said he has no love there, lost her uh, congressional seat uh, to a middle-of-the-road, what we call a conservative Democrat, out there in uh, Utah. But then you go to states like Wyoming. These are very um, sparsely settled states. They have old Lynn Cheney there and two senators. And then you have the Dakotas, North and South Dakota, Heidi Heidi can't lost her seat uh, in uh, North Dakota. That was to be expected. And uh, North Dakota has uh, fortunes have been better since they've been able to get in the fracking game uh, for petroleum there. But now petroleum is down, and when it goes down, the revenues of uh, South Dakota are different. And when we go now south, we have states like Texas. Um, Bino Rourke ran a very close race in the state of Texas with uh, Lion Ted Cruz. He is thinking about, Bino Rourke, that is, is running for president. Has a good opportunity to go into Iowa because of his style. We noticed that there's several operatives out there now talking about, well, Bino Rourke voted uh, 30% uh, with the uh, Trump administration. Well, coming from Texas, you would expect that. That's not a big deal. Being in the Congress is one thing, but when you go into national office, a totally different situation. I believe what he had three terms there, six years, uh, has some of a record. But at the same time, uh, it is not much of a record. This is a presidential contest, how it is uh, shaping up there. Of course, you have our candidate, Bernie Sanders, the man that should have won the Democratic nomination. It was stolen from him. And lying deep, deep in the woods, 
is a Hillary Rodham Clinton. Don't count her out of the ball game. And in Iowa, you have uh, Amy Klobuchar, who comes from the uh, Minnesota state next door, where Trump came close in, but no cigar there. And that was based upon the working class. But things are changing now. Uh, we have the Sears uh, retail uh, debacle going on, stores being closed right and left. A billion, uh, I think it's $4 billion uh, loan from some of these equity organizations uh, that hinges on whether or not Sears will come out of bankruptcy or just will just simply liquidate, putting uh, 60,000 retail plus retail workers out the door, so to speak. And this is a state of brick and mortar uh, retailing. And then we also had a rumor that uh, Amazon should buy a Target to uh, have more, basically have more brick and mortar, that would have been in 2018, more brick and mortar uh, locations like the Walmart. The problem is this, and we'll talk about this on Numbers Man, because uh, it's in a macro uh, position, and we didn't mention Numbers Man, sorry about that, but uh, the situation is basically this, there's just not enough retail uh, presence out there, or I should say consumer presence out there for all the retailers that are in the game. So you have more toys. That's a very good example. Now uh, some of the retailers have split up the toys or us business, uh, the toys in other words. But the economy is not what it used to be. Uh, the online people did uh, much better than uh, the brick and mortar locations. And as you have, if you noticed, uh, during the holiday season, yes, there was a... Uh, uptick in the holiday season but at the same time and these things do count up we look at them every day uh, they are very slow to count up but as the economy goes down uh, those happen let me just jump back to this uh, the Pelosi and Schumer were the first to suffer a setback they uh, taunted uh, Trump during uh, their televised that was the 11th of December in the Oval office saying Republicans didn't have the votes to pass the uh, $5 million border uh, wall funding. Uh, they called uh, the uh, necessary first step for negotiation. The House Republicans could bring this bill up if uh, they had the votes immediately and uh, set the tone for what you want, uh, Pelosi declared. Schumer uh, rubbed in the salt in the wound telling the president you don't have the votes in the House and when uh, Trump protested he would have the votes if I need them. Uh, Pelosi responded, well, then go do it. Well, the situation is now the Republicans don't have the votes. They are going to kick the can down the proverbial uh, road. They basically already kicked the can down the road. Uh, Nancy Pelosi and the uh, Democrats, however weak that coalition is, there are some progressives in it, fortunately will uh, take up legislation to move this uh, forward. Now, the problem here is the longer this 20, mythical 25% uh, of the government stays shut down, the more difficult it is to restart it. And it will start to linger on uh, Trump, who, uh, who basically has an administration with very uh, short-term uh, goals. The problem with Trump has always been the economy, he pointed to the economy, he talked about such things as the labor force participation rate. We'll get into this on numbers, man. It is up around, what, 61, 62%. But what kind of participation rate is it? And this is where the rubber meets the proverbial road. Yes, people have more jobs. African Americans have more jobs. But what are these jobs? And what do they pay? And also, if you, I was at the market last night. The uh, retail prices, uh, particularly of foodstuffs that ordinary people buy, have increased. That is one uh, position uh, for raising the interest rates. There is inflation, and it's not counted, not counted, I should say, in the normal inflation uh, tables that you see. That and energy. Now, energy is down. Uh, Petro is down. Uh, what in the in many locations of uh, from 235 to about 240 or so. I hadn't looked at gas buddies. We'll do that later. Let me move back here. So uh, he did, and on the 20th, the Republicans passed a funding bill. It included the 5 billion requests for building the wall, but the Democrats responded uh, 
in uh, the easiest way possible. They did nothing. Notice that the Republicans didn't have the necessary 60 votes in the Senate. Now, D.J. Trump has talked about a short-term nuclear option, not the way to go, uh, because in the future they could lose the Senate and the ball game. That's the Republicans. Instead, he demanded that Trump abandon any request for wall funding. Negotiations have gone nowhere. Since the Democrats are confident, the shutdown uh, will be unpopular, and Trump will take the blame uh, for it more than them. The calendar is also on their side if they run out the clock. On the January the 3rd, the new Congress will uh, be there and replace the one that is there now. And in other words, they basically have this uh, weekend and uh, they're not going to be there on New Year's Eve uh, to get it done. It's not going to get done. Uh, the bill that passed uh, the House before uh, Santa Day, known as Christmas, uh, with uh, uh, the uh, money died, leaving Republicans a weaker and not stronger position. Pelosi could quickly send a spending bill to the Senate. The only question is whether it would include the $1.6 billion in wall funding the Democrats have offered. That was in early uh, December. The uh, $1.3 billion uh, they floated before Christmas are nothing during the December 11th meeting, and that should have not been held uh, in the public. The same amount of funding uh, was in last year's appropriation for Homeland Security. Now, that is one of the departments there. Schumer uh, would uh, need seven or eight Democratic senators to avoid a filibuster. And his party's grassroots wants to defeat uh, Trump, uh, whatever there. Still, the shutdown uh, could run the nation. Uh, introduction to the Democratic uh, could ruin, I'm sorry, uh, which already has lousy ratings. Well, Congress has had l- rous- lousy ratings. A 20.1% approve and 68.9% disapprove. That is at the uh, real uh, clear politics, the average. Don't uh, pay any attention to it because people continue to re-elect uh, people to the uh, Congress. So that in itself is just one of those situations. Let's go to our roundup uh, here, I think. Yeah. And uh, this is where, I, um, let's see... Um, Mr. Uh, Diddy, I believe, plays into the... No, no, sorry about that. The uh, rapper uh, Ice Cube and also another rapper uh, is in talks to buy some of these regional channels. Now, these are channels that uh, Disney is forced to uh, abandon uh, in their merger. This is the Yankees here in in talks again with Amazon and Sinclair Broadcasting. Uh, One of the outlets we're on is now owned by uh, Sinclair. A uh, joint bid for the team's regional sports network. These are the ones that uh, the uh, Ice Cube and company are uh, talking about. And this is reported in the Wall Street Journal. The uh, team owns uh, 20% of Yes and has been in talks with other potential prob- uh, partners, <laughs> including uh, cable and satellite provider uh, Otis USA and Redbird Capital about buying the remainder 80%. This is from Disney. A lot of people are in talks with various people, various regional channels out there. The valuation on that is uh, five to six billion dollars, and Disney is uh, buying, of course, twenty percent of Fox, the film and TV assets, and has said it will uh, divest uh, twenty-two of the uh, regional uh, channels, including the one that's focused in New York. So that is some of the up-to-date uh, news. Now back a little bit to the financial situation. Retirees are getting to be a bit nervous. About that, and this is the infamous 401k uh, syndrome, and and this is a problem with short-term economics. DJ Trump juiced the economy by the 1.5 trillion dollar tax cut bill. That does bring growth, and at the growth, and at the same time, concentrating on manufacturing. Manufacturing itself is an outmoded uh, model. And if you get into manufacturing, you start to cause problems. First of all, a small percentage of the country is actually in, quote-unquote, manufacturing. And it is a very globalized uh, sector. So you're having problems there. Then come the tariffs. 
billions of dollars have been lost in the tariff uh, campaign. The Trump administration has been forced to compensate uh, farmers, uh, particularly soybean farmers, and China has bought some soybeans. But at the same time, uh, because of the uh, closure, farmers are worried that literally the paperwork cannot be accomplished. Uh, there's a story of a woman that moved uh, from Boston down to Charles- Charleston, in South Carolina. She said, I uh, have not looked at my numbers. I'm afraid to do it. Uh, this is uh, Nancy Firmington. She turns uh, 75. We've been conditioned to stand a pat and not panic. I uh, sure hope my advisors are doing the same. Well, the problem is when you look at the reality here, you could have problems. Retirees are worried about their nest egg this month's uh, sell-off. Uh, is the worst uh, year for uh, in a decade. That's back to the Depression of 2008. And the meltdown. Now, because of the work of uh, President Barack Obama's administration and the uh, Dodd-Frank rules, which the Republicans uh, and the Trump administration would like to lessen the effect of, that's the reason they're not in a depression right now. And this is one of the big, big problems. Retirees uh, have less time to recover from a bad investment, no doubt about that, than a younger worker. But this brings to an interesting situation the future of the 401ks. Many industrialized countries have uh, more generous safety nets for retiree pensions. Uh, for U.S. Uh, private uh, sector workers, largely have been uh, supplanted by these 401k accounts and other private savings plans. Now, we named some of these modern uh, capitalist countries, Belgium, Canada, uh, Germany, and France, and Italy receive on the average about 65% of their income replaced by mandatory pensions. And in the Netherlands, the ratio benefits, uh, my friend uh, Judy there, uh, to uh, lifetime earnings is about 97%. That's according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development's report. Now, uh, compared to U.S. replacement rate for Social Security benefits is about 50%. Uh, retirees have watched their private accounts mushroom during what's called the bull market. That was under Barack Obama from uh, 2009. At the end of 2016, 70, uh, 69% of investors in their 60s had at least 40% of their uh, in a 401k uh, portfolios invested there because interest rates were low. Up from 65% in 2007, as according to Employees Benefits Research Institute in Washington. Still fewer have gone all out uh, in uh, on uh, stocks in recent years. 19% have uh, more than uh, 80% of their 401ks invested in stocks in 2016, down from a 30% at year's end of 2007. Nothing has gone wrong, but it seems the market is trying to figure out uh, what to do wrong. That's from Brooks McMurray. He is in New York, about 69 years old. And she became a financial news junkie in the Depression. Three major uh, indexes have uh, tumbled about 10% this month, weighted by investors' worries, of course, about China uh, there, and raising the interest rates and on track for their worst year since December of uh, 1931, that was the big depression, or what they call the Great Depression. We have lousy forecasts in uh, 2007. This is from somebody named Jim Baer. He worked uh, for McDonnell, Douglas, and Boeing for 36 years in uh, St. Louis. Today, employment is up. The housing market stay well. Not really. The corporations are flush. Yes, they are flush, but that money is not going back into the economy. Barry says he's uneasy about the leadership at the White House. And the call uh, by uh, Steve Manchin uh, to the top bankers uh, did more to rattle than uh, the assured uh, market. The U.S. stocks tumbled more than 2% the day before the Santa Claus holiday, which is a, a big one out there. And this is from Reuters, incidentally. I am not freaking out. This is from somebody called Morris. Uh, I have uh, savings uh that in early years of retirement, I would be fine. And more said, still, he is a concerned about the job market, and he will continue to work until he is 70. He worries at the, uh, about uh, the costly uh, long retirement, given his mother lived to be almost 90, his father 96. 
when he died. That's a very long time. Incidentally, the death of Mr. Oberton down in Austin, Texas. He was the oldest living uh, veteran of uh, the uh, Second World War, the Great Patriotic War. He died at 112 years old. May he obviously rest in uh, peace. And let me just move along here. And we've taken care of Kwanzaa. Stetson Kennedy exhibit. Let me just make sure this is in St. Augustine of Florida. Uh, that will be through the 31st at the uh, St. John's County Administration bu- Building. Extensive uh, exhibit there. Exhibit includes various uh, awards won by uh, Mr. Kennedy. His books in both English and other languages. A wall about the folk singer Woody Guffrey. He's a friend of his. And a fellow champion of human rights, the Florida Historic Society has a display about Kennedy, the KKK, Superman, and uh, Florida's Artistic Hall of Fame Award, Dr. King's Letters, and other memorabilia. In the 40s, a Superman post encouraged kids to be all Americans by accepting people of all uh, religions, races, and national origins. A handwritten uh, note from a uh, letter from Woody Guffrey to uh, Stetson Kennedy is is on uh, the back side of a book jacket from his uh, the Stetson County's first book, first book, Pimento County. And that reception was hosted by uh, the Stetson County uh, Foundation, his uh, widow, uh, Sandra Parks. And this was in the 40s that he actually infiltrated the Klan, closed them down in Florida. You can see that exhibit in St. Augustine, um, well, today um, in the St. Augustine County Administration building, they're open. Uh, I'm assuming they will be open on a Christmas Eve uh, there in uh, Florida. And let me just uh, roll a little bit more along here. I don't know, we've examined that. Okay, we'll take a pause here. This is WBRN Radio, an internet-only radio station. We'll be right back. Now, programming note here, on a Monday, that'll be the 31st, uh, New Year's Eve, we have the Monday morning quarterback. We're debating uh, what we're going to do here. Uh, will we have a uh, traditional uh, New Year's Eve program, or will we wait uh, until... Uh, after it and have the uh, New Year's New Year's slash New Year's Eve program uh, after the Monday morning quarterback. Well, we're still debating and we'll figure it out uh, to ESPN now and sports. We'll look at some of the bowl games. That'll be uh, later today. Florida at Michigan. Uh, that'll be the chick of uh, whatever bowl there. South Carolina uh, UVA, that will be at noon. That will be at the uh, Beck Bowl. Anyway. In Arkansas State and Nevada, that will all be at 1 p.m. Notre Dame and uh, Clemson, they will be in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl uh, Classic. That's a word there. And a traditional Orange Bowl, that of course is played in Florida. That will be uh, Oklahoma versus number one Alabama. That'll be the most watched game. There'll be no doubt uh, about that particular one. Uh, we'll be looking at that. To the NBA, we have the Mavericks were at the Pelicans. It was the Pelicans uh, 114 to 112. The Thunder were at the Sun in Arizona where it's warm, uh, 118 to 102. The Thunder over the Sun. The Nuggets of. Uh, Denver, uh, the Spurs actually were in Denver, uh, 102 for the Nuggets, 99 there. The Clippers of Los Angeles and the Lakers cross-town rivalry there went to the Clippers, 118 to uh, 107. And the Alamo Bowl, I guess uh, another one here, Iowa State uh, versus Washington State. It was Washington State by two points, 28 to uh, 26. Syracuse uh, won their bowl. Uh, here, who were they playing? Well, I'm not sure about that. 
It's the World Camping Bowl over, oh, West Virginia. Anyway, Auburn uh, over uh, Purdue, the old Boilermakers there. Uh, And this was basically it. We'll have another wrap-up of it. Let me just make sure the NBA scores. We got everyone in here. Uh, oh, we didn't. Anyway, the Raptors and Magic. Uh, it was a Magic 116 to uh, 87 over the Raptors. The Bulls and uh, Wizards in Washington. It was a Bulls 101 to 94. The Cavaliers and Heat. It was a Heat 118 to 94. For Cleveland. And in overtime, the Hawks and the T Wolves. The uh, Hawks pulled that one out in uh, Minnesota, where we assume it's cold. Uh, 123 to 120. The Mavericks and Pelicans, I think we gave that one 114 to 112. We did the Nuggets, Nuggets the Thunder, and the Lakers. Now on to the NFL, the NHL. National Hockey League. And what do we have going there? The Canadians and uh, Pampas. The final there was 5-3. Uh, to three, uh, The Canadians and the Senators and Islanders. It was the Islanders 6-3. to three. And the Maple Leafs and uh, Blue Jackets. It was the Maple Leafs 4-2. to two. That is the hockey uh, for the day. Let me just check one thing here. The uh, college uh, scores. Make sure we didn't leave anyone out. There are so many bowl games these days that uh utterly almost impossible. Well, today we I hope we did uh, Florida number 1 uh, number 7 Michigan, South Carolina, Virginia. That would be an Eastern noon game, Arkansas State, Nevada, that would be at 115 Eastern time. And we already uh, put in uh, for Notre Dame and uh, Clemson. And the big game will be at the Orange Bowl tonight. Number one, Alabama. And number uh, four, Oklahoma. Who will win that game? Be very interesting a game there. Will it be an upset by Oklahoma? Let's see the line here. Uh, where are we? Bama is uh, favored uh, there, and the over-under is uh, 77.5. Be a high-scoring uh, game there, no doubt. Of, did I read that correctly? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Well, bet the over-under. Anyway, uh, let's go down here to... Oops. I guess we've given all of those... Uh, wait, wait a minute, just a minute here. We haven't gotten there yet. It's a long list. <laughs> and we're still trying to get there. Uh, Iowa State, Washington State, we gave that one. That was a two-pointer. It was Washington State, 28-26. Uh, to 26. West Virginia and uh, Syracuse. Uh, the Syracuse, 34-18. to 18. Purdue and Auburn, it was all Auburn. They were 63-14. to 14. They were pounced. And later today, we have Cincinnati, Virginia Tech. Oh, that's on Monday. I'm sorry about that one. And uh, I guess we don't have anything later today. Sanford and uh, Pittsburgh. That'll be also on Monday. Um, Michigan State and the Oregon Ducks. Um, Missouri and Oklahoma State. Northwestern and Utah. And uh, North Carolina State, Texas A&M, that's usually a pretty good game. Mississippi State and Iowa, that'll be on the first uh, New Year's Day. LSU uh, and Kentucky and uh, Penn State, it should probably be a pretty good game. University of Washington and Ohio State, a lot of Ohio State fans out there. And Texas, of course, they're number 15. And Georgia, I assume Georgia is favored in that game. Yeah. The over-under is 58 in that particular game. And the national championship will be on the 7th of uh, January. That would be in Santa Clara, California, the Levi Stadium. And so much uh, for that. This will do it uh, for us the uh, week that was on WBRN uh, Radio on the 29th of December. Uh, happy Kwanzaa to all. Happy Holidays. Happy New Year. Happy Christmas. Uh, we left anybody out on that one. Very interesting uh, social, uh, logical situation here. I was wishing a fellow uh, the other day uh, 
a happy Kwanzaa. And he looked at me and he said, ah, well, Merry Christmas. I said, okay, whatever. There are enough holidays out there for everyone. But the theme of inclusiveness uh, from all of the many uh, communities, uh, a lot of us are in uh, the community uh, with Bernie uh, Sanders and the progressive uh, community there, and inclusive with the other communities, including uh, the open source uh, community, liberate software community. All of the quote-unquote progressive communities uh, need uh, to get together and be uh, more inclusive for the general uh, prosperity. We're not on the petty moralizing thing here, but the whole point there is is uh, progress and to move progress uh, forward. We do have something uh, from the... Uh, and I guess we'll probably have... Wait a minute. This is a public news service. Health centers racing for the January 15th enrollment deadline. This is in uh, Alamosa, Colorado. The community health centers are uh, pressing forward with efforts to get uh, more residents uh, covered under the Affordable Care Act despite a recent Texas court ruling that it was on Constitution, a federal court decision expected to be appealed. And uh, Joseph Rivers' outreach and enrollment uh, leads with uh, the valley-wide uh, health system uh, said uh, doesn't change anything with 2019 coverage. He added there's still time to enroll before uh, the uh, January 15th deadline. Don't assume uh, you won't qualify for assistance to help pay for the cost of care. Uh, that is too expensive. Rivera. Uh, did I say Rivers? Rivera. Anyway, Colorado's deadline is a month later than uh, the federal uh, marketplaces in the state of Colorado. Early indications show enrollment numbers in uh, the on, at the national level declined at least 4% from the previous year. The Trump administration said it's cutting advertisement budget uh, for uh, the ACA. Uh, by 90% to avoid wasting spending. They were trying to do what they could do to sabotage things. Jenny Rodriguez, outreach and enrollment leader in uh, the Mountain Family Health Center, said her uh, team has uh, prioritized it out, its outreach to rural areas where many people aren't aware that financial assistance is available. She said for many people in Colorado, coverage of costs uh, less than uh, some uh, cell phone plans. We have a lot of uh, radio commercials, social media, newspapers, and we're doing our bit here at WBRN Radio, went around giving uh, presentations to a community partners all about inclusiveness. Rivera said the uh, health insurance is the most complex business decision for many families and helps uh, to have access for people who can break uh, down a technical uh, terminology's impact on their pocketbooks. What a deduction is, uh, what a uh, co-insurance is, a maximum out of pocket expenses. Uh, the many uh, dues uh, don't do deals with those terms on a daily basis. Rivera said, he said, many families uh, learn about the coverage op- options by word of mouth. He encourages Coloradans uh, to uh, help spread the word. This is ColoradoConnect.org. Uh, uh, We'll uh, put a uh, deal uh, to it uh, in the state of Colorado. Appreciative here of the uh, public uh, news service. Have a good weekend. Good day, and we'll see you on a Numbers Man. That'll be next.